Welcome back to Medinair. Lifford has classified the fracture of middle third of facial skeleton as Lifford fracture 1, 2 and 3. In this video, let's discuss about Lifford fracture 1 in detail. Lifford fracture 1 is also known as low level fracture as it is present in the lower middle third of the face and also called a subzygomatic fracture because it is present below the level of zygomatic bone. The term floating maxilla or pterygomaxillary disjunction is used as there is separation of complete dentoalveolar part of the maxilla. It has also got other names including Gurens fracture and horizontal fracture of maxilla. The fracture may occur due to a force applied violently over an area above the level of the teeth. Those fractures are not usually confined to a smaller section of the alveolar bone. We can describe the fracture line of Lefort 1 fracture as follows. The fracture line starts at a point on the lateral margin of the anterior nasal aperture. It passes above the nasal floor and it also passes laterally above the canine fossa and traverses the lateral antral wall, passes down below the zygomatic buttress and then inclines upward and posteriorly across the pterygomaxillary fissure to fracture the pterygoid laminae at the junction of their lower third and upper two thirds. It may sound complicated, but I hope this flowchart makes it easier. At the same time, from the same starting point, the fracture also passes along the lateral wall of the nose and joins the lateral line of the fracture behind the tuberosity. In this picture, we could see the Lefort 1 fracture line clearly. Here are the clinical features of Lefort 1 fracture. Swelling of the lower part of the face and upper lip is seen, but there is no gross edema or facial disfigurement. Echemosis is seen on the labial and buccal vestibule, contusion on the upper lip and laceration on upper lip and intraoral mucosa. It also manifests with bilateral epistaxis which refers to nosebleed. The most significant feature is the mobility of the upper dentoalveolar portion of the jaw which is frequently mobile to digital pressure. Occlusion may get disturbed, leading to open bite, cross bite, etc. Dull cracked pot sound is heard while percussing maxillary teeth. Telescopic or impacted fracture refers to upward displacement of the fractured fragment and it tends to get locked there. This resembles a telescope and hence the name telescopic fracture. Guren sign is also another important feature of Lefort 1 fracture which is characterized by ecchymosis on the palatal side in the region of greater palatine foramen. In some cases we could able to see people manifest with air emphysema and mid palatal split in Lefort 1 fracture. Now how do we treat Lefort fractures? It follows the same basic principles of a fracture treatment which includes Reduction, fixation and immobilization. Reduction refers to restoration of the fractured fragments to the original anatomical position for re-establishment of form, function and their occlusion. It can be of two types which is closed reduction and open reduction. Closed reduction refers to alignment of the fractured fragment in continuity without visualization of the fracture line which means no surgical intervention is needed. Reduction if simple, can be done by fingers and Roe's disimpaction forceps is used in case of impacted fractures and Hayton-Williams forceps is also used in these cases. Now, open reduction means reduction of the fractured fragments with the help of surgery. Once the fracture is reduced, fixation is done. It is done in order to prevent displacement and to achieve proper approximation of the bone fragments. It is also done to preserve blood supply and allow early mobilization by promoting healing. If it's a simple fracture, no fixation is needed. If needed, introsious wiring is most commonly used. In case of comminuted fracture, maxillomandibular fixation along with suspension wires is used. An arch power of maxilla should be suspended from pyriform fossa, zygomatic arch and orbital rim. And in case of edentulous patients, Occlusal splint is used for fixation. 
After fixation, immobilization is done for which fixation device is retained for a particular period until clinical bony union takes place. For maxillary fractures like Lefort fractures, 3 to 4 weeks of immobilization is required after which prevention of infection is mandatory and gradual rehabilitation of the fractured fragment occurs. And that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys found this video useful. Do like this video and subscribe to Medinair. Thank you for watching.